Hello, today we're going to be looking at 2D barcode mapping creation in LilyPad Mobile Warehouse. Now the first thing we're going to do when we log in as the admin is we're going to actually go to our options. And in order for 2D barcodes to work, the scan only mode needs to be enabled and the 2D barcode checkbox would need to be checked. The lock here allows us to lock the feature so that no other user can edit the mappings that we're about to create. So now that we've saved those options, when I scroll down as the admin, I will see the 2D barcode and barcode mapping section. The first delimiter type we will look at is a new line option where the pieces of data are all separated onto different lines. So I'm going to click the plus box to create a new mapping. And I'm going to give my mapping a name. So in this case, we'll call it new line 2D barcode mapping. And my delimiter by default is set to new line. We can set it as the default mapping that would be used, and then we can scan the barcode to see the data within it. And now we're going to go create the mapping for this barcode. So now the first thing here, you'll notice all of the information that's available to be used in creating your mappings, and the tracking would actually come directly from your Fishbowl database. So in this barcode, my part number is the first piece of data. The next line is the quantity. My next line is my expiration date, and you have to specify the format of the expiration date as the barcode reads it. And then my last piece of data for this line is going to be serial numbers. And you'll see here our use for remaining checkbox means any data on remaining lines would be used as serial numbers. And then I would go ahead and save. Now the next delimiter type that we're going to look at is a comma. So the pieces of data are separated by a comma. So I'm going to create a new mapping, give my mapping a name, and you'll see in the next video you can actually use these mappings to create your own 2D labels. So in this case I'm going to create one that I can use for receiving down the line. And the delimiter is going to be comma, scan our barcode, and then create our mapping. You'll notice the data is separated by the commas. So similar to our last screen, we're going to create all of our mappings. So I would select part number for my first item quantity for my next piece of data. And if I actually forget what my barcode looks like, I can view the sample barcode, close that, and then I can go on to my lot number in this example, and then my expiration date as my last piece of data, again formatting the expiration date as the barcode reads it. Throw in some notes at the end, and then save that barcode mapping as well. Now the next delimiter type we're going to look at is a space, where the data is simply separated by a space. So same thing, we'll create a new mapping, give it a name, space separated 2D barcode mapping in this case, pick my delimiter as space, scan my barcode example, create my mapping. And we would have created it the same way as we have the previous screens, adding our notes, saving our mapping. Now the next delimiter that we're going to look at is a custom character, which can be a hyphen or some other character. In this case, we're going to use the hyphen. So we're going to create a new mapping, give it a name, custom character mapping, and my delimiter, I'm going to use custom character. And here is where I'm actually going to input the custom character that is used. In this case, it's a hyphen. I'll scan my barcode, and we're going to go create our mapping. So the mapping set appears just like our other screens. Again, the only difference is our data is separated by now the custom character, the hyphen. The next delimiter that we're going to look at is the character range. And in this example, for the GS1128 barcode, we're going to tell the system that certain positions represent one piece of data, while another position down the line might represent a different piece of data. And I'm actually going to show you how to ignore certain ranges as well. So let's begin one more new mapping. I'll name it the GS1128 character range barcode mapping. For our delimiter, we're going to choose character range. We're going to scan our barcode example. And we're going to go create our mapping. So here in the character range mapping, we're going to use a slide bar to determine the positions and what data it corresponds to. So in this instance, I'm going to skip the first two pieces of data, the 0 and the 1 and then say the next 14 positions represent the part number. And I can choose to strip the leading zeros if I want. 
Then I go down a little farther and I move the slide bar down a little bit more and I'm going to make this my expiration date. And I'm actually gonna skip positions one and seven so that the next six characters are our expiration date. And we're gonna pick the format that corresponds to the barcode. I'm gonna create one more data field and this is gonna take me to the end where I'm gonna skip the positions one and zero here and then just say the last six positions are our lot number. So what we've done here is taken a GS1128 barcode and used the character range to skip the certain pieces of information that we don't need and tell the system what it should use. We put in our notes, and again, you can see the 1, the 17, and the 10 positions there are what we're skipping. We're going to save, and now we've successfully created this mapping. Now when I go back to main menu here, let's see this in action. So I'm going to go to, to Purchasing, and I'm going to go to Receive for this example. So I'm going to scan in my purchase order. That'll pull it up. And now you'll see a nice pinkish icon on the top right hand side here. That is the 2D barcode. So you'll select the mapping that you're going to use or the default. And we're going to scan our barcode. And right now I'm going to show you this is 30 pieces of tracking, 30 serial numbers assigned to this one item. Now what I've done is I've actually left that checkbox off to show you what the data is included. But if I were to redo it and actually check that press enter to send box, my scanner is rules built in that after the last piece of data to send the carriage return or send the enter key. So by doing so, it's going to automatically hit enter. And now you see my quantity of 30 is pulled in and 30 different tracking numbers here, all within that single barcode that came from, in this case, my vendor. And all I have to do is confirm the location that I'm receiving against and then finish that. And now you've successfully used 2D barcode within LilyPad Mobile Warehouse and just saved yourself a ton of time with one scan. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.